Uh, all right, for our audience at home, could you introduce yourselves and also to, to tell us a little bit about your two films? Who do you want? I'll, I'll start. Uh, hi, I'm Kelly Walker. I'm the writer director of My Fiona, and I'm here with Corbin Reed, one of the stars of My Fiona. And My Fiona is a movie um, about a woman when her best friend dies from suicide. She takes it upon herself to take care of her best friend's wife and their child, and an intimate relationship is formed. Um, my name is Juliette Strangio, and I am the producer director of Cecily and Lydia at the Waypoint. And this is Christina Shaver, who is the producer and writer of Cecily and Lydia at the Waypoint. Um, and our film is about two women who have never met another person in their entire long lives, and one very balmy day they meet and a relationship ensues. Awesome. So Kelly and Corbin, where did the inspiration for this film come from? Because it hits a lot of powerful subjects. A lot of um, people are dealing with suicide because of uh, the pandemic and things associated with. So you hit, you know, you, you hit a lot of hard points here in life to build this beautiful story. So tell me where did the inspiration come from and where did you start in the writing process? Uh, the inspiration there's a couple of different aspects of it, but uh, when I was 12 years old, my babysitter passed away from suicide and it had turned out she'd been prescribed the wrong antidepressants. And it was kind of one of those things of, if they just got it right, she'd still be around. And that was just so infuriating to me that a person's life could be taken for negligence like that. And um, it happened, a similar story happened to my brother's friend in his, in his twenties. And that's kind of where the idea or the the frustration was then channeled through this story. And then the idea of um, sexual identity and having to choose or having to label is something I've personally gone through and personally tried to figure out. So I think there was a part of me exploring my bisexuality through these characters in a very safe way at the time of writing. And then you're making it and then you're talking about it. You're like, oh, I can't hide behind this, you know, these these words anymore. I have to own them, which is, um been a whole experience in itself have you you know have you come to terms with your babysitter you're passing away your brother's friend was this therapeutic for you you know I think I'd already come to terms with that um I think it was the bisexuality it was more learning to celebrate that because I'm I'm happily married to a man yet I do identify and um so I think it was more about that the the irony is, because the movie's about grief and loss and mourning and processing, um, about two weeks before our premiere, our other lead, Jeanette Moss, passed away from cancer. So in a, in a very strange way, that idea that there's this movie about grief and loss and then to go into this, this stage of the film actually literally relating to what the characters are going through has been that I'm still processing because you write a movie to get through something and now you're going through it and you've already made the movie. Corbin, what did you learn about yourself uh, professionally and personally while making this film? I don't think I've ever um, let myself feel grief for that long, um, that intensely. Um, it was emotionally really 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 um I wasn't expecting it it was really challenging um my process is I'm not a method actor or anything but I do you know I like to know my characters from the inside out and just like it's more of like I'm living them when I'm playing them especially when it's like a drama like this something this serious and that I think I just I learned how when you're portraying an energy, your body doesn't know the difference. And so if you're thinking those thoughts and, and you're that you're, you're feeling that grief and we, you know, for two and however many weeks, I forget it was maybe three weeks, two weeks. It's just, it's, it's a lot. Um, so, uh, you know, I've had people close to me pass and, and, and obviously, you know, like Kelly was saying with, Jeanette, it's just, it's surreal um, in, in the worst possible way. Um, but I, I just think I learned how, I don't know, I just got very intimate with grief through making this film. And yeah, it was, it was a challenge. Any advice would you give to anyone going through grief? 
that you found that, you know, helped you especially? I would say you have to let yourself feel everything, no matter how painful it is, um, and not rush yourself. And you have to, the only way th past it is through it. So I think when you try to say stop, I'm not going to feel that that's when you start <clears throat> creating anxiety and, and depression and all of these things. And I think people are afraid to let themselves feel, feel grief because it doesn't feel good. But I, that's the only way, that's the only way to get back to a good place. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. And, um, I think it's also normalizing the conversation about grief. We feel like we're not allowed to talk about it or there's something wrong with us, or we're almost like it's diseased. And mm. I think the more we start to talk about how we're feeling, kind of like what Corbin was saying, like talk about the ugly side effects or characteristics of grief, the more we're going to allow people to have space to experience whatever their journey looks like. Mm -hmm. Juliet, tell us a little bit about the writing process of your film. Where did you come up with your story and how did you develop the, um, the script? Well, Christina actually is the one who really birthed this whole idea. Christina. All right, Christina, let's turn to you. So <laughs> and we'll come back to you, Julia. Don't, don't worry. But Christina, <laughs> tell us about where the inspiration for the story came from and how, how you developed it from the page to the screen. You know, I, I do somehow I fall into rabbit holes in life and I found a podcast on philosophy at one point and I just could not stop listening to every single episode. And it was one of my favorite classes in college. I happened to have failed logic, which is a principle that you have to use in order to make philosophical uh, arguments. But um, so I'm not saying I'm any good at it, but I really love it. And I just love all the ideas in terms of how we think about life and why we're here and the nature of our existence. And, um, I guess that is kind of where I where my headspace was when I was writing it, and I had read a few or reread and read for the first time a few different plays and um, books, and I just uh, took it from there. Well, making the if you don't mind me asking this personal question, but in your mind, did you ever find the the uh, the question of the meaning of life? Did you? through this process, did you discover that or did you get any more clarity? I don't think so. I think it's a mystery. My own personal viewpoint is I'm not certain why any of us are here or what we're supposed to be doing or what our purpose is, but um, I think searching for it and trying to figure it out is a worthy endeavor while we're all spending time consciously. Um, I, I think what I was trying to convey in the writing of the film is just that, is that we can kind of go through life potentially on the surface. And I think it's important to really be able to kind of look a little deeper and try to figure out for the limited time that we're on the planet, what are we, what are we trying to do? Awesome. So Juliet, tell me about your role in the film and tell me about, you know, the filmmaking process on your end. Yeah, so Christina um, had written the script and we did a table read and I was so excited when I read it because I thought it was kind of zany and would be a really fun visual film. Um, and there was a lot, we, you know, changed a lot in our edits. I mean, a lot of the script is still there. It's just, we had a very big experimental, uh, period of time um, where, you know, it's difficult when you're making a film, which is essentially why does anything happen a certain way? And then you're like, well, we could just swap everything around and justify it in a way. <laughs> and it's, so it got a little out of hand, but um, it was really fun. I feel like Christina and I worked together really well. Um, and so everything was very collaborative from like the script at the beginning and then through casting and then how we wanted to run our set. We were very lucky. We found this house in the middle of Wisconsin with no Wi-Fi <laughs> where we filmed the whole thing and there was a forest on the land and the roads that we needed nearby, um, which we might have filmed on slightly illegally. Um, and it was really lovely. Like we created this little oasis of a film shoot with all these people we love working with, which again, we were very lucky to have with us. 
Um, and we shot it in a short period of time, but our main focus was to create an environment that wasn't stressful. Like we had our camera break for a good portion of a day and we just kind of all were like, well, should we make some sandwiches? Like, <laughs> guess we'll wait for this to <laughs> fix itself. Whereas I feel like other shoots, people would get very um, understandably upset because time is money and, you know, sometimes it is really stressful, but we tried to avoid um, that at all costs. So that was uh, the main philosophy when like directing and uh, I think for us as producers. Talk to me a little bit about the the cottage, the the, the place you film, because I think in your movie, and also to thinking Kelly and Corbin's movie, the, the set and the locations is a character within itself. And you mentioned no Wi-Fi. So do you think it, it's important to disconnect with your crew? And you know, to really go yeah, on. Yeah, it absolutely is. I think we were like, we should cut the Wi-Fi on every film shoot we do. <laughs> It's so great. Time seems to expand, which is lovely. Um, it, it was really good. And I think about five or six of us were staying at the house. So like the cinematographer, Amy Limpenyakel and myself would sometimes um, just take the camera out after dinner. And we started filming Fireflies on 6K and then told Christina and she was like, what did you do? <laughs> That's going to be very expensive to store. Um, but it was really fun. And it, we found a lot of organic moments because we were like, really anchored to this one house um and no one was on their phones or their tablets yeah. so would you say that you know during the filming that you guys really became really close and intimate as co-workers and really got to understand each other and do you think that contributed the success to the filming uh, the finished product of this film i definitely for sure i mean we i there was wi-fi at the top of the hill so if people wanted to go walk about half a mile up the hill, they could go get Wi-Fi. And even that was an adventure for people because they would bond over it. Like, who wants to go to the top of the hill? Are you going up? I'm going to go up. Are you going to go down? Can you tell them I need? It was really a very nice way just to for people to interact and um, get to know each other. I highly recommend. Yeah. For, I highly recommend no Wi-Fi. Also just doing shoots on location where you all go away together. It can be a little more costly just because you have to make sure everyone has accommodation and food and all of that. Um, but it's it's so bonding. It's so nice if you have a good group of actors and crew. It's just like Sounds delightful. so much fun, I, you know. Yeah, it's like it camp. So fun. <laughs> yeah. Camp for adults. So Kelly and Corbin, what has the reaction been, you know, with your film? What has the feedback been from your family members, but also to friends and strangers and people of that sort? I mean, we're still in a pandemic. So the experience is still very much, um, if a tree falls in the woods and we didn't see it, did it happen? Um, but I do get emails from people that have watched it that tell me a story about someone they've lost and that has been incredible. And then, I mean, almost every review mentions the acting, which is, makes me so happy. And um, uh, Corbin, I got to send you, I, there's so many good ones out there. Um, but yeah, there's, I think what's been nice too, is I did get to see it in Florida. We US premiered at Florida Film Festival. And afterwards that interaction with people about grief and those that people that had passed away, I think because of Jeanette's passing, I'm able to actually like almost lean on them and their stories in a way that I wouldn't have had a relationship to it had that not have happened. Um, so as far as like my process of where I am with my grief, it's, that's been really welcoming. And Corbin hasn't seen it in a theater yet, so. I can't wait. <laughs> you know, there's nothing that beats a theater. Christina, you know, what did you learn about yourself professionally and personally throughout this whole process? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think the thing that resonated with me most is just, um, really it like it really is about who you make films with and how you're able to serve other people there's this idea um that i try to really use which is really hard called servant leadership where you are there to try to help people be the best that they can be and because of that the group rises together and that can be really difficult when you're working with a whole bunch of people. And it's a lot easier when you're working maybe with one or two people. So I think what I learned about myself is that I, I think that I've been able to hopefully embody that a little bit without with this particular set. And I'm 
excited to, in the future, as our productions grow, see if we can continue that. Because I, I do think that that brings about everyone's best talents. And that's what you're really looking for. And there's so many wonderful, talented artists out there. Um, and it's just a pleasure to work with people that bring so much. That's awesome. Kelly and Corbin, how can we honor your friend, Jeanette? How, you know, for our viewers here that are going to view this, you know, next week and next month and next year, or people who come to the film festivals to see your film and hopefully in the future, see it on Netflix or a streaming platform. How can we honor your friend? What can we do as individuals? What would you like us to do? So she, she was very spiritual and she, um, she was a big like 1111 wish it on 1111. If everyone knows about the 1111 wishes. And she passed at 11.11. So every day, I guess my, my ask to you is if you, if you get an 11.11, um, not to wish for her, but to wish for someone that's not yourself and mm -hmm. to kind of pay that magic forward because she was so much about what she could give others. And I just kind of want to see that continue from watching her work. I love that. It's beautiful. 11.11. I'm going to get a tattoo. It's going to say 11.11. Awesome. Lastly, Christina, Julia, what are the websites for the film? Where can we follow your, your professional career and all your successes? Oh, that's a great question. Christina and I are notoriously bad at social media. It's a uh, one falling. So if anyone is really into it, please call us. And we will <laughs> Use the telephone. <laughs> um, we do have a website. It's at thewaypoint.com. Um, I think that's all we have, Christina. We should I really. That's all we have. Bad and smoke signals. Feel free. <laughs> yeah. If you see a pigeon, it was us. Um, but yeah, we should get Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> that Instagram thing. That's all what the kids talk about. Okay. Kelly and Corbin, what are your websites so we can follow you, follow the film, but also to follow you guys professionally and support you in the future? MyFionaFilm.com at MyFionaFilm across all socials. I got a handle, guys. <laughs> I'm a tech nerd. <laughs> we need to talk, Kelly. Tell me. <laughs> Fax me. Scan me. <laughs> Pager. We'll get our pagers going. <laughs> and Corbin, you should pump your show as well. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, let's uh, pump your show. Tell us a little bit about your show. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it's actually, it takes place in Harlem. It's called Run the World. Um, and it's for black women in Harlem, um, just like navigating love and friendship and um, family. And yeah, it's really just like, a, it really is a joyful show with elements of drama sort of shot in there. But Harlem is a fifth character in the show. And it was really, we shot there. That was super important to the writer. And um, it's going to be on Stars. It premieres May 16th. And, uh, Mazel tov. That's great. Yeah. At Run the World Stars, and then my handle is at Corbin M Reed. These are Instagram handles. I don't really have like a website or anything like that. But. Awesome, Christina, Juliet, you have podcasts or anything else? I don't want to leave you guys out, but <laughs> just just the film, right? I love it. We've got projects in the works. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you know. <laughs> All right, awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time out on Mother's Day to chat with us. And again, you know. We'll remember your friend 1111 and, you know, may her memory be a blessing and congratulations on to everyone on a great, you know, two these two great films. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Deb. Thank you so much.